Are Ukrainian forces actively dropping chemical weapons on Russian soldiers using drones? Now, this would be a war crime. Videos have emerged over the past couple of days showing Ukrainian soldiers outfitting drones with what appears to be canisters of some sort of chemical agent. We don't know. Other videos have emerged showing these drones dropping these canisters on Russian soldiers. The videos are horrible to watch uh, as soldiers writhe around on the ground. Uh, convulsing, having seizures, and of course dying uh, moments later. We're not going to show you those videos. You can seek them out if you want to. And of course, all of this comes almost 20 years to the day when Colin Powell famously held up a little white vial of what appeared to be anthrax. At the time, we now know that, that it was faked and got us into a war in Iraq where millions of people lost their lives. A man who tried to prevent that war knows a lot about chemical weapons and weapons in general is former UN weapons inspector Scott Ritter, who warned us all about the lies that we were about to see on that day. And Scott joins us now. Uh, good to see you, Scott. Welcome to the show as usual. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, this, of course, the story about Ukraine is amazing. And you, with your experience trying to warn the world of the lies that were being perpetrated in Iraq, when you hear these stories coming out of Ukraine, these videos emerging of purported chemical weapons being outfitted on drones, what happens in your brain? Like, is there like a, an alert that goes off? How do you assess what you're seeing in Ukraine versus what you knew happened in Iraq 20 years ago? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I have to take the uh, the videos at face value. Um, you know, being an inspector, uh, you know, I, I, I cut my teeth on the concept of trust but verify, uh, meaning that, you know, I, I can my eyes can trust something. I can I can hear people talk, but I really need to verify. So <clears throat> we have uh, you know videos that uh, have clearly identifiable people in them. We know who these people are. They 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 brag who they are. Uh, and they're claiming to be producing um, what looks like to be a, a hydrogen cyanide type weapon, which is a you know a, a, a deadly gas. I just remind people that if you bite into a cyanide capsule, uh, you will die. Um, hydrogen cyanide uh, is is a deadly gas and that will kill you. Um, and they're 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 they they appear to be producing canisters designed to be dropped from drones um, filled with this deadly uh, chemical agent. So. You know, and then we have the video, as you said, I, I saw it. It's not an easy watch. It's uh, in fact, is it sickened me um, and broke my heart um, because clearly the, the guy was struggling to live. He wanted to live. That was a human being who did not want to die. And he was being subjected to one of the worst deaths imaginable. Um, I don't want to get into you know what hydrogen cyanide does, but it's it's not pretty. Um, and his death wasn't pretty. And again, um, you know, I want to trust that that video is showing me what it shows. Um, but you need, you, you do need verification. But then let me, let me talk about double standards here. If we had a government, uh, if we had a videotape showing Syrian government forces bragging about how they were going to produce a chemical agent and deploy it by a drone. Uh, and then we had a video that showed a drone strike against, say, a white helmet uh, or some sympathetic uh, figure, you know, to the United States, uh, some of the Kurdish uh, people that we claim to support in northern Syria, and showing a Kurdish fighter writhing the death on the ground in the most horrific fashion. I can guarantee you the United States would be holding an emergency session of the Security Council right now, demanding a full-scale investigation by the um, Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW, uh, backed by the United Nations. They'd be seeking a Chapter 7 resolution by the Security Council to hold those who perpetrated this accountable, meaning that they would use military force in response. That's what the United States would be doing. But there's silence. Silence, yeah. deafening silence right now. Crickets. The world is silent. The OPCW is silent. Where is the organization? You know, these, these these brave members, I don't have, I have no use for the OPCW. I just hope you will understand that I am strongly biased against them, not because of what they stand for, but because of what they have become, a, literally a tool of the United States and its NATO allies uh, to <clears throat> pervert the cause of, um, you know, uh, banning chemical weapons into uh, something where they use um unsustained allegations of chemical weapons to justify military action, because that's what they did in Syria. Um, we don't need to get into that. People can read what I've written and read other reports. Uh, uh, 
uh, Andre Matei just published a fantastic um, <clears throat> article in his Substack, and I encourage everybody to go there about exposing, again, the lies and duplicity of the OPCW. But the OPCW has an intelligence branch that monitors um, media, social media, et cetera, and they've allowed themselves to be used by uh, the White Helmets and other anti-regime forces in Syria, where the, they have planted video evidence uh, showing, you know, Syrian government uh, crimes. And then the OPCW has immediately acted and demanded access, demanded access, need to get in there, had to do this, et cetera. Guys, OPCW, you, 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 you have the videotapes. You've seen them. They're publicly available of the Ukrainian forces bragging about preparing this and then actually u- using it. Why aren't you demanding access to Ukraine? Why aren't you going to the Security Council demanding action against the Ukrainian government? Where are the sanctions? Where are the threat of military force? Why are you silent in the face of what is clearly a war crime, a war crime of horrific proportions? And here's the danger. If you tolerate this, silence is consent. Hmm. And to remain silent only encourages the Ukrainians to escalate, use more. You know, on that videotape, I think they showed two canisters being dropped. We don't right. know the whole story. Um, but the, the point is that refrigerator was full of dozens of canisters, scores, hundreds. Um, are we going to allow those to be used? And rumor has it that they have been used. They've been used on the front against other Russian forces. These are just the building videos that we have right now. Um, and if the Ukrainians feel that they can get away with this, then what happens when they escalate? Because producing crude chemical weapons is not hard. Uh, And the Ukrainians clearly have the capacity to produce on an industrial scale, phosgene gas, mustard agent, blister agent, nerve agent, simply taking some um, some of the uh, fertilizer compounds or uh, or pesticides and tweaking it a little bit and using it against people or don't tweak it and use it against people. you know, and are we going to let this happen? I mean, the United States has a history of doing this. Uh, even before the OPCW was formed, we worked hand in glove with the Iraqis to help them target Iranian positions on the Al Fal Peninsula, so the Iranians could use their chemical weapons more effectively. We helped target Iranian or Iraqi chemical weapons. It may be a newsflash to people. I'm telling you, it's a God's honest truth. Are we going to do this now with the Ukrainians? You know, we provide all the targeting data for Ukraine for major things like High Mars, etc. If the Ukrainians decide to incorporate fully chemical agent into their arsenal and use it against the Russians, are we going to help plan? Are we going to help execute this? Um, again, silence is consent. The American government is silent. And the American people now, anybody watching this, Europeans, etc., you're now silent. You, but you've been empowered. Are you calling people? Are you demanding the United States actually stand up for what it claims to, 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 to believe in? the ban of chemical agent, or are we going to sit here and say, no, it's okay as long as it's just Ukrainians using against the Russians. That's not a bad deal. Wow. I guess that means the Germans were okay using uh, Cyclone B against Jews. It was just Germans killing Jews. It's not, not a big deal. No, it's a big deal, guys. It's a huge deal and it has to be acted on. Today, the hashtag Zelensky war criminal is trending. Uh, it's being shared all over uh, and it's gone viral today. This is a day like literally after he's meeting with the, in front of the UK Parliament with Rishi Sunak, standing there being praised, handed, being handed uh, gifts, treats, treasures, whatever, while asking for more help from the UK Parliament. I don't recall, maybe you, you can enlighten me on this, I don't recall anyone from the UK Parliament asking him about these chemical weapons. Did, did you hear anything like that? Did they press him at all about this? No, nor did they ask him about the uh, <clears throat> new video showing the execution of Russian prisoners of war, which right. is a war crime. Zelensky is a war criminal. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just understand that. He's a war criminal, and every time he meets with a politician, he flew to the United States. He was received in the White House. He was received by Congress. He was allowed to address Congress. You allowed a war criminal to address the American people from the most sacred venue possible, the People's House, Congress, in a joint session. And you allowed him to sit in the White House, the People's House, and talk to our president. He is a war criminal. It's not just the crimes he perpetrates using chemical weapons or the execution of prisoners of war. He literally provides sustenance and and, and he sustains Nazi ideology. His government has embraced 
Stepan Bandera, one of the most hateful, odious characters in modern history, a actual follower of Adolf Hitler with the blood of tens of thousands of Jews, hundreds of thousands of Poles, hundreds of thousands of Russians on his hands. He is the national hero of Ukraine. Children are trained by law in Ukraine to worship Stepan Bandera, the Ukrainian military, which we support with our taxpayer money. And I'm not talking about Azov battalion and the other neo-Nazi nationalist units out there. I'm talking about the mainstream Russian military, their paratroopers, their tankers. They sing songs about Bandera being their father. And his this war criminal is in front of everybody being treated like a hero. Silence is consent. To condone this is to condone war crimes. Now, you said the Russian army, but I think you meant the Ukrainian army there. But oh, that, be, if I said, if I said just, Russian, yeah. that's just because I'm... Um, I sometimes yeah. get excited and I get ahead of myself. <laughs> just want to be clear, just so that no one calls yeah. you out on that in the comments. Um, absolutely. And we've seen video after video and have seen little children, uh, you know, saluting pictures of Bandera and parents. So it's just it's just awful. Um, I, I want to just kind of circle back on the the mechanics of some of these chemical weapons and the canisters and the drones and there's just piles and piles of drones and they're sitting there mechanically putting these things together and getting these parts you say it's it's pretty easy to put all of this stuff together um we know that there there have been civilian attacks using american weapons we know that in hospitals and apartments that american high mars were to blame uh being used we talk about the targeting of these these places did these things happen in a vacuum, do they happen just with the Ukrainian military, these targeting, whether it's using these drones over these targets? Is it just the Ukrainian military or we can safely say that it's probably NATO complicit in some of these attacks? No, 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 no. NATO is complicit in all the attacks and all the attacks. Mm -hmm. you, again, you could be complicit by being directly involved or you'd be complicit by having knowledge of an undertaking and doing nothing to stop it. You know, in the, in the military, um, I can be charged with war crimes um, simply by knowing about it and not doing anything to stop it. Um, there is a moral obligation. And, and I bring up the military because the people who are providing this assistance to the Ukrainians are American service members wearing the uniform of the United States. And they are cognizant of the crimes being committed by the Ukrainians. And yet they are doing nothing to stop it. Um, <clears throat> so that makes... American service members, war criminals by extension. That makes the American public a nation that condones war crimes. We are guilty of the crimes being committed by the Ukrainians because we empower the Ukrainians to commit these crimes. You know, I just want to get you out of here on this. You, you've just written a piece about this 20, 20 year look back on, on Colin Powell and getting us into this Iraq war. What stands out to you now, 20 years in hindsight, uh, you were, of course, sounding the alarm about what was about to unfold. There were no weapons of mass destruction, no evidence of chemical weapons, which and then no one, you know, the government didn't want to listen and millions of people died as a result of it. When you look back on that now, what do you think about those those days 20 years ago? Yeah, um, you know, I, I entered the UN inspection process um, with eyes wide open. I mean, I, I, I knew what we were doing. I knew what the American policy was regarding Saddam Hussein. Um, and it, it, you know, it was, it was difficult. When I first joined, I actually went down to Washington DC and I, and I said that, uh, cause a lot of people make me out to be this naive boy scout. Ain't nothing naive about me. Um, I went to Washington DC and I said, look, I know what the policy is, regime change. But the United Nations is talking about disarmament. And if we disarm, sanctions will be lifted and that undermines regime change. Is there a game being played here? If there is, you know, I don't want wink, wink, nod, nod. I need you to tell me straight up there's a game being played. I'm a big boy. I'm an adult. And then I will make a decision whether I want to play that game with you or not. Um, and I probably would have because I'm an American and I do what my government tells me. Uh, if I think the cause is just. And at that time, I was convinced Saddam Hussein was the most one of the most evil men on the planet. <clears throat> but they said straight up, nope, you need to implement a Security Council resolution. And you work for the executive chairman and you take your orders from the United Nations. And I said, so that's the will of the government. They said, yeah. So I spent the next seven years doing exactly that, only to find out that there was wink, wink, nod, nod going on. 
Mm-hmm. They wanted me to do something else. And I said, no, no, I got my orders. I, you know, I obey my orders. My orders are to f- faithfully execute the mandate of the Security Council. Um, and But there was always this struggle taking place. So I understood the 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 conflict in the United States about Saddam Hussein's continued survival and how what I was trying to do with disarmament interrupted that. <clears throat> I resigned because of it, but I, I didn't feel betrayed by my government at that point in time. I, I was angered by the policies. The betrayal came when we, because to be frank, prior to that, the people paying the price were the Iraqi people. And while my heart goes out to the Iraqi people, as an American and as a Marine, um, my loyalty is to my Marines, to, to that. So, you know, I resigned on principle, etc. But as I saw my country going to war, that's a whole different, you know, concept. And I firmly believe that you can't go to war unless you've exhausted all possibilities to resolve the issues peacefully. And you have to go to war being honest about this. It's one thing to lie so you can continue to strangle Iraq. It's another thing to lie to put American lives on the line. And what I saw in the lead up is that the the American government was willing to lie to the American people to make a case for war that would cost thousands of Americans their lives, but it was a dishonest case. Hmm. And I did my best to speak out against that and say, no, the, you know, well, I'm not gonna let Iraq off the hook uh, they don't have what you claim them uh, for them to be having, and it's not worth the drop, of, you know, of the blood of any Americans on this. Colin Powell was a man that I held in the highest regard. Uh, I had interacted with him in the past during the INF Treaty when he was one of the guys that got that treaty off the ground. Uh, during the Gulf War, he he had my back when people were, were uh, <laughs> angry that I was telling the truth about not killing any scuds. And as a weapons inspector, he stopped the CIA from uh, removing me and two other Americans because we weren't playing the wink, wink, nod, nod game. Um, So I held this guy in high regard. But when he sat there in front of the Security Council and he told lie after lie after lie after lie to justify us going to war, I said, oh, my God, well, these I mean, I'm not naive. I know the U.S. government lies. But to lie to the American people like this, to go to war, it um, it broke my spirit. And ever since then, what I've come to realize is that American officials are incapable of telling the truth about anything. Hmm. Because from that moment on, we have never told the truth about anything. We haven't. Everything we say is a lie. And that's what I've taken away from this. And, and here's the part that hurts. You know, it's one thing for an American official to tell a lie. It's another thing for the American people to be empowered with the knowledge and information that proves that that is a lie and then do nothing to hold that person accountable because you've become complicit in the lie. It's the same thing we talked about with that American service member who is aware of a war crime taking place in Ukraine, who is facilitating that war crime and doing nothing to stop the war crime. Our government lies to us on a daily basis. And we, the people of the United States of America, do nothing to hold them to account for these lies. So we become partners to that lie. And this is what's heartbreaking because we are literally a nation that lives on a throne of lies. Well, and this week we learned that confirmed by Seymour Hirsch that in fact the Nord Stream pipeline was in fact blown up by the Americans as we had all suspected. Um, And there's silence once again. Silence, mainstream media is ignoring the story. The Associated Press is complicit in uh, being a stenographer for the White House. And we're we're all complicit in this. Where is the massive investigation? We're freaking out about a helium balloon that drifted over the United (laughs) States. But but we're not upset about a pipeline that was destroyed by United States terrorists. $12 billion piece of critical energy infrastructure. Uh, This was literally a... um, an energy Pearl Harbor for, for Europe. Uh, we It was a surprise attack carried out by the United States against our erstwhile European allies, especially Germany. Uh, the, the, the ramifications of this attack is the economic destruction of Europe, um, and yet no one's talking about it. Seymour Hirsch has bravely put the truth out there, but the, you know, the U.S. government denies the American media is complicit in that lie. 
But the most stunning thing is that the Germans who were attacked are complicit with their own silence. Right. This is this is shocking. <laughs> It's really one of the most amazing stories I've ever uh, I've ever covered, and it's amazing to watch the European silence. I'm in Europe, and it's just crickets, absolute crickets. Yeah. Um, it's 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 like a, you know an abusive relationship where everyone else sees it, but they don't want to acknowledge it, so everyone just stays quiet about it. America, America loves them. America loves them. Mm -hmm. No, we right. don't. We don't love you. We don't like you. <laughs> <sighs> I would encourage all of you to go out and read uh, Scott's sort of retrospective piece on uh, on Colin Powell. It's a, it's an eye opening, uh, and if you weren't there at the time, you don't know the context. Uh, I'll link it up in the description below. And uh, always always great having you on the show, Scott. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your context on all of this. Thanks for having me. And you know, you point out to Scott. You know, so many people in the chat were like. No one listened to him, you know, and millions of people died. And he was right yeah. and has been vindicated since. And even, you know, even Seymour Hirsch writing that big piece on him in the New York in the New Yorker, like fully investigated uh, and and studied and went deep into the sourcing on on Scott and his sources and confirmed what Scott had said. Um, and so, you know, impeccable journalism. Because why would you want to say things that Congress doesn't want you to say? We saw in the Twitter files what happens when right. Congress has a narrative and then pushes people to form around that narrative and how they're like, yes, but can you just say what we need you to say for whatever selfish purposes? Right. You know, at the end of the day, you can you can like the guy or not like the guy. It doesn't really matter. What he was saying is accurate. And, yeah. and he's now vindicated. And a guy like Colin Powell sitting there with a vial of anthrax that was faked, moving an entire country to war where millions of people end up losing their lives um, and destabilizing an entire region. Like that was the result of that holding up of that anthrax file. Yeah. Um, anyway, awful. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.